my fans, we got UFC 284 this Saturday. The main event, the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Alexander Volkanovsky, versus the number two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Islam Mahachev, the lightweight champion. This is for the lightweight championship of the world. And guys, this is one hell of a fight. One hell of a fight. I have a feeling this is going to be even bigger and better than the Charles Oliveira fight. I was definitely very much looking forward to that fight. And it went down not like I expected it to go. It was very surprising. Mahachev pretty much did what he wanted. I'll get into that a little bit later. But yes, we're right here. We're going to break down the fight. We're going to go through it. We're going to see how this person wins or how they lose, what's going to happen next if they win, what's going to happen next if they lose. You know, I pretty much want to break this all down for you guys, so let's get right into it. Let's first start off with Alexander Volkanovsky. You know, of course, he is the featherweight champion of the world. He is the GOAT right now, the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. The guy is literally one hell of a legend. He is definitely already a Hall of Famer. You know, he's definitely in the top of being one of the greatest featherweights of all time. You know, the greatest featherweights, you got Jose Aldo, uh, Max Holloway, and Alexander Volkanovsky, in which Alexander Volkanovsky beat them both. And we remember Alexander Volkanovsky's uh, last fight, which just so happens to be against Korean Zombie, pretty much just annihilated him. He stopped him. He pretty much just defeated him, no problem, without any sweat. Oh my goodness. And then that Max Holloway, the end of the end of the trilogy, part three, he pretty much demolished Max Holloway in ways we never even seen. Dustin Poirier at Lightweight could even do that to Max Holloway. That was one hell of a back and forth fight they had. But Volkanovsky pretty much just put a beating on him. And then who remembers when he went against Brian Ortega, got him in that submission, got him in that guillotine, and then that triangle, and did not give up. Pretty much toughed it out and became and still remained, I should say, remained the featherweight champion in the world. He is going to be facing Islam and this is his um, lightweight debut. But what a lot of people don't really know about Volkanovski is that this is not really necessarily a, a debut because he's actually fought at upper weight classes before. I believe his um, weight class max was at middleweight. The guy was a 200 pound rugby player over there in Australia. He is not... A guy that walked around at featherweight all his life. He's a big, big, big man, you know, at one point. And has dropped down a um, significant amount of the weight. Now, Volkanovski's moving up in weight. You know, now he is not cutting weight. He's moving up in weight. He's over there at the 155-pound division now. So now, we're going to see him possibly even better. It could be better or it could be worse. We do not know. But I have a feeling it's going to be better in my opinion why because Volkanovski he again was at one point 200 pounds a rugby player this is not no unfamiliar territory you know he is not walking around with weight that he is not unfamiliar with he is not at a weight class that he's not unfamiliar with he doesn't he's not like going against um this is not his first time going against a bigger opponent because he's went against bigger opponents before. Maybe not the same caliber, sure, but he has still been in that class. So this is no um, unfamiliar territory. In recent years, of course, yes, you know, he's been a featherweight. He is 154 pound, uh, excuse me, 145 pound champion of the world. But again, this is not no unfamiliar territory. So how can Volkanovski win? Well, Volkanovski, I feel if you put these two guys in a boxing match, Volkanovski is much more faster when it comes to his hands. And I do believe he is a little bit more powerful when it comes to the punching. He's a little bit more powerful. So again, Volkanovski has not um, recently fought above the 140-pound division, 45-pound division, but he is still uh, no no stranger to it. He has fought against guys much more bigger than he is. He has went against training partners with much more bigger than he is. He trains with guys like Dan Hooker and, of course, the former middleweight champion of the world, Israel Adesanya, who is, of course, like I just said, middleweight champion of the world. So he is familiar with fighting and training with bigger opponents. So how can he win? Well, he has to use his striking. He has to really do his best to not get psyched out with Mahachev's wrestling because that's what Mahachev's really good at is what is wrestling with psyching people out and that's what the problem is when someone is really good with their hands um and also great with the wrestling it really psychs you out it really makes you and keeps you guessing like dude if I throw something he might shoot in or if I if I try to you know defend the wrestling he's gonna um 
catch me with some good left hooks or left right hooks or you know jabs and straights he's gonna catch me with something so if Volkanovski can really really not allow himself to get psyched out by uh, Mahachev's wrestling and he think he could actually make it very difficult for uh, Mahachev to get him an anti any kind of grappling exchange where when he Mahachev does get him in a grappling he realizes that he's a lot more stronger I'm talking about Alex He's a lot more stronger on the ground. He's actually a lot more tougher than expected. You know, that is a lot more harder for him to get in any kind of submissions due to the fact that um, Volkanovski's arms are not as long. You know, Volkanovski's neck is, isn't as long. So it is a little bit more challenging to get this guy into a tighter submission because you don't have a lot more of a body to wrap yourself around. You know, that's basically what I'm trying to say. So if Volkanovski can really, really defend all those submission attempts and defend some takedowns and show how strong he really is because I do kind of feel he might be the strongest in there walking into that um that cage then I could really see a possibility where Volkanovski can really light um Mahachev up because that's where something we don't know with Mahachev. Mahachev has never really been in the five round fight. He has stopped all of his opponents really. He's had a few um decisions in three round fights um, but if things don't go his way, we still don't know how um, Mahachev will react to it. We've seen Volkanovski. We've seen Volkanovski with Brian Ortega with that submission attempt in one round and did not give up. You know, Brian Ortega walks around at probably about the same height as Mahachev. I know he's probably not as strong as Mahachev, but, you know, still, that says a lot with uh, what Volkanovski was able to handle. Now Volkanovski is going in there not cutting weight. He is not going in there um, dehydrated. He's going to well fed. He's going in there well um, packed on some muscle weight, you know, some weight mass and such like that. So now he's able to go in there comfortable. Where Mahachev, this is, he's, you know, cutting weight. You know, this is not um, some easy walk in the park for him, too. I'm sure he cuts a lot of weight. And, you know, it's, you know, it's not saying it's difficult either. You know, I'm sure he, uh, he's been at lightweight for all his life. So I'm sure he's able to cut it, no problem. But where Volkanovsky, he's not cutting weight. And again, this is not like what I'm going to go into with John Jones and Cyril Gong, where John Jones is going up into a different weight class where we never even seen him fight before. Um, this is uh, Volkanovsky's no, you know, again, this is not his first first time around this park. He's been at a weight at this weight before. He's walked around this weight before. He's walked around even heavier than this weight before. And he's moved around and played and been very athletic at this weight before and higher. So this this is definitely going to be a very interesting fight because Volkanovski is a very, very, very tough opponent. Now, I believe he could win with the striking again. Like I said, if he can stop Volkan um, Islam's takedowns, and if he can stop some of the wrestling, and if he can definitely stop some of the submissions, I do believe that Volkanovski could win on points by um, multiple strikes with the striking game. With the striking game, I really do feel that way. That's just how I feel he could win. He could win it by decision, a possible late stoppage in the fifth round. That's just what I see. How can, um, what would be next for Volkanovski if, um, if he does win? Well, you know, there's a fight also on the undercard. We got uh, Josh Emmett versus um, Yair Rodriguez for the interim featherweight championship. And the next one's going to be up um, with, uh, with um, you know, Volkanovski being the featherweight champion already. It depends. I could see him possibly going down and fighting um, the winner of that fight. Or he might stay. You know, because I do feel like he did enough at the featherweight division. I do feel like he already accomplished what he needed to accomplish in the featherweight division. So I don't see him much really. I mean, I know he's openly said that he wants to be busy. He wants to stay active and he wants to try to defend both belts. I just purposely don't see that. I really don't think he should do that. You know, I remember the great legend Roy Jones Jr. did that. He went up to heavyweight, then he went back down to light heavyweight, and he just really wasn't the same anymore. You know, packing all that muscle and then dropping that muscle mass, it's really, really, um, it puts a lot of um, unnecessary pressure on your body. It puts you, it puts your body through a lot of unnecessary stress. You know, it's just it's just not good for you, not healthy for you, especially at his age. You know, he's still relatively young. He's in his um, early 30s, but still, you definitely don't want to play your play games and tricks with your body like that. You know, if I was him, I would stay where the money is at. I would stay 
um, where he can probably get the biggest paydays, like going against like Justin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Michael Chandler, even Conor McGregor with his return coming as well. You know, that's something I do feel like he should do. Because again, even at featherweight, I really don't see much there left for him to do. He's already beat Max Holloway multiple times. He's beat all these tough title contenders multiple times. There really isn't like a whole lot there left for me me purposely so what could be next i could definitely see a potential matchup with the winner um of like maybe even a charles Oliveira. i could see that would be a fun one you know maybe a dustin poirier that would definitely be a fun one there would just be so much more fun matchups for volkanovsky and much more tougher challenges you know for volkanovsky that's something i could definitely see if he just so happens to get this victory what if he loses? Well, again, he is going in there as the 145-pound champion. So if he loses, he is still a 145-pound champion. So he will definitely get take on the winner of Josh Emmett versus um, Yair Rodriguez and definitely continue his path and continue his reign as probably one of the best, if not the best, 145 pound champions of the world. It's no, you know, nothing really big, but I, you know, a lot of people are saying he, it's not a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure because you're fighting in your home country. You're fighting in your hometown. You're fighting in front of all your friends, all your family who come to see, come to see you and everything like that. So of course you want to become the fifth double champion of the world. And so it's a little pressure, a little riding high. But not so much to the point where you are, um, you're going to lose everything. Because you're not. He is still going to go in there and leave. Whether he win, loses, or draws, become uh, still remain the 145-pound champion of the world. So that's my take on Volkanovski. Now for Islam. Islam Mahachev. You know, Islam Mahachev, um, his own coach, Javier Mendez, actually said that maybe he shouldn't be number two pound for pound in the world. I, I do agree. You know, if you look at his resume... It's definitely stacked and very um, impressive, but not the most impressive for a number two pound for pound. You look at his names, you got Charles Oliveira, who was a champion, who was a pound for pound fighter. Um, I believe you I want to say it was like three or four, maybe five. Uh, but still, you know, Charles Oliveira was no punk. He was definitely one hell of a champion. He had some great fights got against guys like Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, <clears throat> and Michael Chandler. Um, but, you know, he was in their rankings and everything. So rightfully so, he should take that spot. But then other than that, you look at the rest of the rankings and there just isn't a whole lot there. You got Bobby Green and you got Dan Hooker. No fault to um, Islam. Islam wanted the tough fights. He was booked for some tough fights. I remember he was booked against Rafael Dos Anjos. It didn't go through. He was booked against uh, Benio Dariush. It didn't go through. So he was booked and ready for some tough challenges, but it just did not come into fruition. But still, he is one hell of a fighter. He is the taller opponent going in there. He is the bigger opponent going in there. So, and he has a lot of wrestling experience. Not saying Volkanovski doesn't, but I do feel um, the heavier wrestler would be Islam Mahachev, who is very dangerous. And he's also shown that he can be dangerous on his feet as well. You know, we saw he was able to do to Charles Oliveira. I mean, that fight with Charles Oliveira, I really felt it was going to be a good, tough challenge for Islam. But he really did a good number on Charles Oliveira. He made it look so easy, just easy and was able to tap out the man with the most submissions in ufc history pretty much got him um i want to i can't remember the quite the submission i think it was like a a, a rear naked no no it was not a rear naked i think it was an arm triangle something to that nature but still he was able to tap out charles Oliveira, and he was able to clip charles Oliveira quite a few times you know he caught him when charles Oliveira was going up for that um flying knee he was he pretty much caught uh a, got a, a nice little hook on charles dropped charles and was able to get in his submission and pretty much tapped him out so, yes, he made that look really, really easy. So we see that he does also have some hands. And that's what I was saying earlier, guys, that when you do have great, great wrestling, you do it. You have a tendency to psych your opponents out because sometimes, you know, your opponents get a little scared. They're not sure whether to strike with you or whether to try to wrestle with you because you just are so good at everything else. And, you know, Islam has been able to show some skills with his hands against guys like Charles Oliveira. Uh, and, of course, great grappling against, again, Charles Oliveira and as well as Bobby Green and Dan Hooker. Um, you know, again, he doesn't have a big name resume, but the names that he has, he was able to pretty much look, uh, make his fights all look very, very easy. 
So how can he win? Well, again, his wrestling. His wrestling and then being able to psych his opponents out. Because sometimes when his opponents are going to try to strike with him, he can easily take them down. When his opponents want to wrestle or grapple with him, he could pretty much change that into a submission. And when his opponents are just psyched and stand back and just not sure what to do, he could use his hands and being able to do whatever he wants to do and feel comfortable in the octagon because he knows he can do whatever he wants. He'll be able to try his best to stop the takedowns. He'll be able to try his best to, like, if they try to take him down, put change it into and reverse it into some kind of submission. He'll be able to use some of his hands and strike. It just... Charles, um, excuse me, um, Islam Mahachev would be able to pretty much be comfortable. I feel like he's going to be the more comfortable fighter going in there, knowing that he's the bigger, bigger man and knowing that he probably is just as strong, if not stronger. I do feel Volkanovski is going to be a little bit more stronger, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, I, you know, you still got that natural weight for um, Islam Mahachev. And Islam Mahachev has a tough training camp. You know, he comes from the guys like, you know, um... Daniel Cormier, he was a former training partner with Habib, who is since retired. You know, he's been in there with guys, you know, possibly training with guys like Luke Rockhold and all these other guys. And he's actually come up with these guys as well. He came up with guys like, you know, Cain Velasquez. He's been around. He has, this is, he's no new opponent. You know, he's been um, Habib's training partner for a very, very long time, since the early days, since the very, very early days. You know, Habib's dad was his first coach coach back in the day so yes you know um islam has been around the game for a while so he comes from a very tough training camp who has a, a lot of tough fighters himself a lot of tough fighters and what better to learn from from one of the greatest of all time himself habib Nurmagomedov. you know and then of course you got training partners like i said like with um daniel cormier and all uh, kane velasquez and luke uh luke rockhold and all these other great fighters who were once all um great champions teaching you um a thing or two so he definitely probably has power Probably the more powerful camp going in there. So how can he win? He could definitely use, again, like his grappling skills is just phenomenal. His submission game is just phenomenal. So I feel like he could win in multiple ways. I feel like if he would be able to um, tire uh, Volkanovski out, take him into deep waters in the later rounds, don't rush it, don't put, don't put yourself out there and take any unnecessary risk, I feel like he could definitely, definitely... Um, um, Really, really tire Volkanovski into the part where Volkanovski might make a stake, um, might try to shoot for a takedown, and be able to pretty much submit him in probably the uh, round three, the very latest round four. You know, because Volkanovski is no no uh, easy opponent. You know, no, there's no such thing as an easy opponent, but the, he's definitely a very, very tough, tough opponent for um, Volkanovski. So, what happens if Islam wins? Well, you know, he's in the stacked division. He's in the stack division. You got guys like, again, like I said, you got Benil Dariush, who's a very fun matchup for um, Islam Mahachev. Then you got guys like, you know, Dustin Poirier, who's always a very fun matchup for anybody. He brings in the action, always brings his A game, is always down to fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. You got Justin Gaethje and um, Fazeev coming up in March. Then you got um, the match that's going to be happening sometime later this year which is what happens to be michael chandler versus conor mcgregor you know that would be some interesting fun fight right there if conor mcgregor were to pull off that victory you got um islam versus conor mcgregor and you already know how that beef is going to go because they already have a lot of beef with each other with the habib and conor and i believe in that melee that happened after the fight you know um Islam was actually there. If you look at the camera, you'll see Islam in that cage with um, Habib and everything. And when all the craziness went down after that Khabib and um, Connor fight. So that would be one hell of a story to um, go into. And also, I remember his coach even mentioning how the fact that he sees um, Islam moving up in weight and going up against the welterweight fighter. I could see that potentially being next as well, you know, because right now there really is no true um, number one contender. You know, like he already beat Charles Oliveira with ease. You know, Benio Dariush still needs another relatively challenger. I would love to see Dustin Poirier go at it. You know, who knows when this um, Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor fight is actually going to take place. So it's going to be a while for him to be um, without an opponent. So I would love to see him possibly go up there for uh, a welterweight belt. Maybe go for um, a two, be a champ champ himself. That would be fun for him as well. So I could definitely see that being happening as well. So what if he loses? Well, I depending on how he loses. Like if, you know, Volkanovski stops him and knocks him out in the first round and it just completely annihilates him, I don't see a rematch taking place. But if he were to lose in a certain way where like it was decision and it was a close fight, then I could see him having a rematch for sure. 
for sure because you know he's a very very dominant force you know and if it's a back and forth battle then why not give him a rematch definitely um but even if they don't get a rematch he's still in a stacked division he still has a lot of fighters and a lot of contenders he could go with like i said he was once linked up with benio dariush i would definitely love to see that fight especially if it's a, there's a title on the line but if there isn't i still would love to see that fight um but other than that yeah guys there's so much ways this fight could go down i cannot wait it is this saturday it is ufc 284 it is going to be one hell of a fight guys do not miss it it starts seven o'clock pacific time 10 o'clock eastern time guys check it out it is going to be one hell of a main event number one versus number two pound for pound for the lightweight champion of the world alexander volkanovsky versus islam mahachev Guys, let me know in the comments on what you think is going to happen, who you think is going to win, who you think is going to um, be the new champ, how you think they're going to win, or you, how you think they're going to lose. Just let me know in the comments, guys. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.